Good evening, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalays at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333, and today we're going to start out with a match between Banana Eye and Dorsh. Banana Eye, I haven't seen in a long time. I'm not sure what they've been up to. Pure team game, or not sure what's going on, but yeah, that's pretty cool to see them back. And Dorsh, we've seen a lot of Dorsh. Dorsh is a player who plays a lot. I'm glad for that. I hope many other players also play a lot, but Dorsh has been playing a lot. So let's get on with the game. So Nana I going for light vehicles, Dorsh going for shields. This into battle, as those of you who have watched for a little while will probably know, is a very open map, which encourages a lot of spreading around, and also encourages typically just getting stuck around here in this one choke point, which will probably happen in this game. Yeah, the way this map tends to work out, you end up with a fairly okay base around here, usually not too concentrated. Well, both northwest and, and southeast, or northeast and southwest. And then you end up with reclaimed fields outside of the bases getting reclaimed. Usually a lot of the fighting happens either in f these two metal extractors or the ones in the north, depending on which player is winning. And of course, units will go around the back, but it's kind of tricky to do that most of the time, especially for light vehicle and shield bot. If we had jump bots, we'd probably see pyros jumping over this cliff right here and then ending up on the other side and harassing from there. But we don't. Instead, Banana Eye going around the back to harass around the back with Scorchers, and Dorsh going through the front to scout out with Dirtbags, and later with Bandits, most likely. So well, that's what we'll see. It's basically a lot of... a lot of combat in the center, and the base is relatively removed from that. Expansion will, of course, continue around, like, expanding around the main base. We'll see someone expand over to the southeast or northwest at some point, probably, but that's a bit of a riskier expansion. I mean, it's doable. It's definitely a good idea. It's just a bit riskier. It's one of those expansion attempts that if you can get away with it, then your opponent just doesn't have those resources to work with. It'll probably be Dorsh going to the southeast and Banana Eye going in the northwest, but it really remains to be seen. Those are kind of up in the air. It's usually that's how it goes, but it looks like it will be the opposite this time around. Banana Eye going down to the southeast to take that. Dorsh does not even know, and Banana Eye already checked. One Metal Extractor down, another one might go down, but it looks like that's not the focus. Scorch is committing suicide because that's apparently what they want to do. They are done with their lives and insubordinating by committing suicide. I just realized that it's actually the second Metal Extractor, and both Scorchers have successfully committed suicide. Well done, Scorchers, although they also managed to kill two Metal Extractors. Not sure if they consider that a success or a failure, but I consider that a success for Banana Eye at least at just killing those metal extractors, but frankly, that was not the best harassment. It was okay. It was pretty good. The important thing was the scouting, but that's still 260 metal. I mean, that is a fair amount of reclaim. Oops. That is 200 reclaim. 200 metal has, well, okay, not quite 200. It's like 130 metal has been donated. Not great, not terrible. The slasher should help get this back in. Slash is pulling back, which will be in range of Banana Eye's commander, so when these bandits die, the commander will be able to reclaim no problem, and that Slasher decided to back into combat range. Because, why not? Didn't really warn anything behind it, it was coming though. Which frankly was a little rude. And very dangerous, that, that is not good workplace safety. And of course, on battlefields, workplace safety is the primary concern, as we all know. Banana Eye switching to levelers to deal with the bandits, naturally, and we should be seeing thugs. Oh, we are seeing thugs. Dorsh going for th thugs right pretty much out of the gate. They are assuming, I mean, they're assuming levelers and generally assuming fairly tough units. So go for the shield ball. Although, admittedly, if Ravagers were to come out, that would be tricky. Like, the thugs have a hard time as the Ravagers just go around smashing down everything they find. Th luckily for Dorsh, Banana Eye is not going heavy on Ravagers. They're going light on Ravagers, however, so it could still be a problem. Not heavy, though. Just just a little bit. Just a few Ravagers here and there. Just to make sure to have a little bit of variety. Mostly levelers, though. Those bandits are mostly done. And Dorsh going down to the southeast hill. This is kind of ballsy. As is Banana... Okay, Banana Eye going to the northwest hill. Normally, the expansion goes kind of north-south. And I mentioned before, this is usually taken by the northeast player. I mean, it... Really depends whoever can get away with it, but at this point, it has been Banana Eye. They've been doing a pretty good job getting away with it, and that that was the bandits dying. Frankly, they were dead. Like, 
Dorsh knew they were dead. Actually, Dorsh going for more bandits. I guess Dorsh does not know they're dead. They are, in fact, just going for more. In spite of the levelers. In spite of the fact that the levelers go through thug shields. I mean, it's not the biggest deal, but they do go through thug shields. It's worth noting. Bit of a bigger deal if you're trying to shield bandits inside of thug shields. But it's a problem for thugs, too. Not the biggest problem. Honestly, Ravager's just avoiding thugs entirely and smacking around everything else. It's probably a bigger problem. But yeah, Thug Bandit for Dorsh. Ravager, Leveler, Slasher, kind of. No real definite composition at this one for Banana Eye. They have a couple Ravagers, a couple Levelers, a couple Scorchers being built. Well, four, three now. And a couple Slashers, for good measure. I think they're just trying to be really flexible at the moment. They're not really sure what they should go for. Levelers aren't a bad idea. Ravagers are rarely a bad idea. Especially not with the shields like this. I mean, the Ravagers can just dodge everything. And they can hit the shields, no problem. And the Levelers hit the shields, no problem. And they have range to work with, so once again, no real problem. And see what I mean? Like, that shield just does not protect the bandits one bit. Honestly, I'm a bit surprised that Dorsh has not gone for either Racketeers, just for general disabling purposes, or for Rogues, for general outranging everything else purposes, because, well, yeah. I mean, Ravager and Thug is about the same. It's, let's see, Ravager has a range of 320, Thug has a range of 280, so Ravager's a little bit higher than Thug, and considerably higher than Bandit is 245. Rogues, on the other hand, would help a lot, and Racketeers are, in fact, the choice of Dorsh's. Gonna go for the Racketeers. And Banana Eye finding Dorsh's commander, but not dealing with it. Instead, going further, more harassment around the side. Which I would agree with. They do not have enough for a Scorcher Dive, especially not against a commander with a machine gun like this. Upgraded once. Note, once again, level 2 means upgraded once, not upgraded twice. Change for the new commander system. But yeah, getting rid of these metal extractors, totally agree with that. These would be killing themselves hitting the commander. They would accomplish nothing attacking the commander. Smart choice there, Banana Eye. Now, four to six of them, that would definitely kill the commander. I don't think they're going to go for that. I still wouldn't recommend it just because these two are damaged. If they were at full health, maybe. But being damaged, it would be suicide. And actually, are they regaining? Nope. No, they're not. I'm not sure if anything actually has regenerating health at the moment. At least the commanders do, but... Nothing major, and both of the damaged Scorchers die for nothing. I mean, I guess they scouted out the defenses, but yeah. At the same time, Dorsh kind of finding that Banana Eye was in the southeast side of the map. Well, they haven't found yet. They will now. And Banana Eye taking the hill. So Dorsh really isn't rebuilding that quickly. It's a thing to point out. Dorsh has been losing metal extractors. They, they lost them in the main base, got them back. Lost them over here. They're just rebuilding the ones in the hill. And this is actually the perfect time for Slashers to come in. And not Slashers, but it looks like Banana Eye's... Not going for that. They, they were for a sec. They had everything going in. Nope. That's not what's happening. Not at all. They are, however, going to deal with this entire army, and frankly, I think they're probably fine. Leveler. The leveler Ravager combo coming in should have very few problems. The Ragtiers will be a bigger problem, but still. Actually, that is the bigger problem. Yeah. Yeah, I don't retract anything I said earlier. The Racketeers are going to be a bit of a problem. They're definitely going to make this a hard time. Now, that's not to say anything about the front lines here. I mean, this front line section, yeah, that's... The shield bots are not going to get anywhere here. Banana Eye disabled an unupgraded commander walking into the main base. Are they forgetting to upgrade? What are they doing? I guess the commander's there as bait, sort of, but I don't understand the motivation of this at all. The commander's basically walking to its death. Banana Eye, why are you letting your commander die? This must have been a misclick, because the commander, if it was upgraded, maybe. But not an unupgraded commander like this. That doesn't make any sense. And Banana Eye hasn't really built up their main base too much. They've been expanding around to the hills over here, over the northwest side of the map. They haven't expanded their main base very much. The southeast is still fairly secure. Not much has been built up for that. Dorsh not trying to contest that at the moment, though their economy is stronger. So Dorsh right now, strong economics, fairly weak military. Or at least having some problems militarily. Banana Eye, unfortunately, is letting their military die. Especially the Wolverines. Those are not on fight move or just generally being cautious. 
feel like Banana Eye is not paying very much attention to their units. A little surprised at that, honestly. They're actually a fairly skilled player. Not sure if it's lack of practice, or just team game doesn't require as much. But yeah, they're surprisingly not really building a whole lot. Or, not, sorry, not really microing a whole lot. Just walking the Wolverines forward. That You never see that. That's really bizarre. Anyway, that Dominatrix is proving to be a real thorn in Dorsh's side. Though, honestly, right now, look at the territory that Dorsh has. Dorsh taking out the northwest side of the map. Has started to retake the southeast side of the map, though still not this one metal extractor. They could use that. They probably should rebuild that. And while they are getting a lot of damage dealt to them by the Dominatrix, I mean, Bandit's pretty much stuffed Dominatrix strategies. The Felon, however, is gonna be a problem. Oh, there we go! Felon hitting the Dominatrix directly. That Felon, nice work in the targeting there, Dorsh. Getting rid of the Dominatrix was the right thing to do. This entire army is basically done. More Racketeers coming in here, but yeah, the Bandit Thug combo it, with the Racketeer support. Like, the Racketeer support is making this. Turning it right around. Once again, Banana Eye in a position where they are not very confident. Taking the Northwest, though. Having the Northwest and the Southeast. Dorsh fully aware of the Northwest. Not attacking it with the Dirt Bag. Oh, they're trying... Oh, the Dirt Bag getting stuck. How odd. Yeah, the Dirt Bag got a bit stuck. Surprisingly, Banana Eye not expanding to the rest of their main base. They'd be at economic parity if they did. But they're not. And Dorsh continuing with the Shield... Shield ball tactic. I mean, it's working out okay. If they get a felon on top of that, that would be risky. Be risky because Ravagers have a lot of health. And the felons are drain. But at the same time, if the felon's just there as a way of getting damage, like taking hits from the levelers, that would help a lot because it would mean that the thugs and everything wouldn't take as much damage because the leveler splash damage would hit the felon shield, which is bigger. On the other hand, though, Banana Eye doesn't really care about that. Going for the commander instead, Dorsh's commander has been idle here for the last five minutes or so. Hasn't rebuilt a metal extractor over here and then a little bit further north of the southeast one they had rebuilt. Just now realizing there is a force coming in to attack them. But at the same time, setting up for a counterattack of their own in that little center... I don't know, like island. Bridge? No. Valley. That's it. That's what they're called. They're called valleys. Low-lying areas in between two raised areas. Although, admittedly, it's more of a land fjord. But I guess we'll call it a valley for now. And in case you're wondering, I do enjoy the sound of the word fjord. It's a good word. So Dorsh's commander able to get away thanks to that counterattack, forcing Banana Eye's forces back because Dorsh's commander was not in a good position defensively. But Banana Eye just can't let this stand. They, they just... Do not have any way of letting this... They're not going to last. If they let this go... Oops. Check their point of view. I mean... They're aware this is here. They're aware of the radar is here. They kind of know there's a bunch of units. But yeah, they were not super aware of what was going on there. So that was... That was a bit of a surprise. Honestly. And having their forces out of position did not help. But it looks like Dor still forced back as a result of this. And unfortunately, losing a lot of forces inside of Banana Eye's territory, but doesn't really matter. Dorsh's economy right now is very strong compared to Banana Eye's. Even if you discount Reclaim, it's still double. Banana Eye finally taking these metal extractors. Not sure to what avail. But they're finally taking them, which is good. That'll at least get them a, into a bit of a better position. And Dorsh, with that one dirtbag, that hero dirtbag... Over on the northwest side of the map, taking out the expansion, the hidden expansion, with no worker support because the Mason died already. So Dorsh in a very confident position. And Banana Eye. Ooh, Banana Eye's the one going for this. They're going for the air factory. They're desperate to get Thunderbirds, probably, because they want to be able to stun out all these shields and then rip everything apart with levelers and ravagers. I mean, now they have the numbers. This is actually. I mean, the Rackers are a. Pain in the butt, certainly. Actually, that's the bigger problem. The Racketeers are kind of hitting everything pretty intelligently, so those levelers really can't get a lot of shots in. If they could, then they have a much easier time tearing apart this army, but they can't, and so that army is doing very well for itself. Dorsh just ripping apart Banana Eye's forces once again. Where are the workers? There are, are there workers here? No, there are not. Some convicts here would be beautiful, just giving Dorsh that little extra push when it comes to economy. Now, Dorsh right now could very easily support another factory, but they aren't going for that. And this, that might bite them. 
Thunderbird's on the way. Thunderbird's on the way, right? That that's a thing, right? Banana Eye, you're you're gonna go for the Thunderbird because you built an air factory. It's nice and pristine. I'm sure I'd love to have a Thunderbird built on it. And no, a Raven. This choice of tactic confuses me greatly. Thunderbird's pretty nearly hard counter shield balls. Ravens, on the other hand, while they do deal a bit of damage directly to felons, do not hard counter for shield balls. And frankly, for the light vehicle player, especially with the amount of Ravagers that are being produced, felons are actually bad for the shield player. If they hit the Ravagers. If they're not, and Dorse is doing a really good job controlling this. I'm very impressed. They're controlling this. This is on manual fire. Like That felon is not attacking unless it is ordered to. And that is what it should be doing, even though it's dying right now, but it had no arm it had no ammo anyway. Like the biggest weakness that Felon has when it comes to the shield bot light vehicle matchup is hitting Ravagers, which have a lot of health, and draining their entire shields. It's one of the biggest issues. That manual fire tactic pretty much counters that. It's a bit of a harder way of doing it, but it does counter it. I mean, sometimes you want to kill the Ravagers, so it's not as much of an auto attack thing or auto AI or an AI thing easily. But yeah, that does handle one of the biggest issues when it comes to dealing with light vehicles. Sorry, dealing with light vehicles as shield bot using the shield ball. And Dorsh pushing in. I mean, Banana Eye just hasn't really been able to get the numbers they need. And those Racketeers have been doing an awesome job. I didn't expect them to do quite that good of a job. I like I said earlier. I did say earlier in the game, Racketeers would be a good idea. I didn't realize how right I was. I'm actually a little bit surprised at the lack of Scorchers to deal with that because. Racketeers, yeah, they're all well and good, but their fire rate isn't that high, and okay, sure, they disarm a bunch of stuff, but level or scorcher or level or scorcher ravager altogether, that would be terrifying. Because the scorchers just get in, and any that aren't disarmed would rip everything to shreds, and all the ones that are disarmed, and we see metal extractors being attacked. Interesting, but a little bit late for that. I mean, Dorsh's economy right now is through the roof. Killing a few metal extractors here and there is not going to do the trick. They are. They're everywhere. Dorsh is everywhere right now. They're just, they just have the map. It's theirs. Just tie it up in a bow and ship it to them. It's, It belongs to them now. And Banana Eye realizing this throws in the towel. So that is game. Right, and Dorsh jumping into chat right before we see one of their brilliant victories. Hi, Dorsh. Everyone got to see you do fine. And we go on to another match, which is also Dorsh, so Dorsh is in luck. They will be able to watch one of their own games, assuming it is a game that they, in fact, won. It is going to be them versus Andrew Y2K on Iced Coffee. That is... And Dorsh pointing out they suicided a lot of crap in the game, I just thought. Yes, they did, but they suicided less crap. And the crap they suicided, they, a lot of it they reclaimed. Okay, we're going to have a match between Andrew Y2K and Dorsh. It'll be on iced coffee. That'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned.